That's it. Give ourselves a big old break. Do you think? So I have a question for you. When you woke up this morning in your perfect, beautiful God state, did you wake up, sashay into the bathroom, look at yourself in the mirror and go, oh my God, have you gotten more beautiful overnight? Look at this body perfection. Did you do that? All right, we have some work to do. 20 minutes, okay. So here's the thing. I mean, when we start our day in that way, where we can see the beauty in us, when we can give ourselves a break, when we start from that place, that's when we can give our love out to the world. That's where we can shine our light. That's what it's all about. But it's that inner critic that gets in and goes, oh, these things, and me, you know, that just does all that stuff. And we have to just say back off to that place in our mind that wants to just rag on us. So I have this great quote from um, Hafiz who said, once a woman said to me, Hafiz, what is the sign of someone who knows God? I became very quiet and looked deep into her eyes, into her eyes and replied, my dear, they had dropped the knife. Someone who knows God has dropped the cruel knife that most so often they use upon themselves, their tender heart, and also to others. So are you ready today to just drop the knife after that beautiful talk, to just see yourself as that child of God? So I want to go back to what, what they were talking about, what Karen was saying about her story of when she just got that, oh, I'm not good enough here. And in my case, it started when I was about 13. When I was growing up, well, is, is it time, can I talk about my hair? Yeah. <laughs> so when I was growing up, I grew up in Hollywood, California. And when you grow up in Hollywood, you have to have long, blonde, straight hair like Peggy Lipton from the Mod Squad. Do you remember her? You had to like flip your blonde hair and go, hi, my name is Amber. I'm really cool. Okay. And I had this, and this was not happening. So every single night, I would take an entire can of dippity Doo. Do you remember dippity Doo? <laughs> I would take an entire can of dippity Doo and just slather it all over my hair, put this side up like this with a million bobby pins, this side up with Bill, and then an orange juice can on top. What that's about, that's even more years of therapy. And then you had to have little tendrils that you do with a little pink tape here. And I would wake up in the morning and pray to God that I would look like Cindy Brinkley or something like that, Christy. So, and I, my hair would go, ee, ee, ee. it would be so dry from the, from the dippy doo. And if it was ever foggy in Los Angeles, my hair would rise like yeast. <laughs> so I was trying so hard to be cool and to be accepted with all the kids. And, um, you know, I'm just afraid that you're looking at me right now, the gorgeous supermodel that I am, and you can't quite get this visual. So... I brought a little uh, pictures that you all could see. So this is me in eighth grade <clears throat> trying so hard to look cool. And it was foggy that day, so I must have like a million rubber bands in the back and just everything so that you're not going to see. And do you love the fact that I've got a full set of braces and I'm going... <laughs> but here's the deal. This is me in eighth grade. And my problem was is that I was trying to be so cool, but I had... One person that I could look at and say, if I could be like that, my life would be worth it. I, I had some place to look towards, and that person that I idolized was Carol Burnett. Do you remember Carol Burnett? So I had this little ritual that I did. Every Friday, I would take the bus down from my little school, and I would stand in line for two hours every Friday to watch the Carol Burnett show. And I would be the first one in line, and my mom made me this little polka dot dress. Are you getting the idea of dweebiness here? I had this little polka dot dress that I would just run to exactly where you're sitting. I would sit in the front row, and I would just be like, yay, I'm here. And so remember when she used to do the, um, the question and answer period? So one time, I'm sitting there like I do every Friday, and I'm watching everyone, and out of nowhere, out of nowhere, my heart starts beating really, like, in my little chest. And I look down, and my palms are getting all clammy, and I'm going, what is going on here? And out of nowhere, my hand goes up, and I'm like, ah! And I try and get it down, but before I could, she calls on me. She probably wants to know who this weird stalker kid is who comes every week. So she says, yes, you know, what would you like to ask? 
And I'm like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, what am I going to say? But I remembered that the week before, I had won the Edgar Rice Burroughs Tarzan Calling Contest. So in my little 13-year-old self, I said, I'd like to challenge you to a Tarzan Calling Contest. And she goes, she goes, great, come on up. So now I get up on stage. I've never been on stage in my life. I have 300 people in this audience. Forget about the millions that are watching on television. But in this audience, they're all like going, they're beaming at me. They're showing me all this love. And I'm going, oh my God, this is really cool. And I'm next to my idol. And I'm just, going, I'm like in that place. And everything is great in that moment until I look out. And right about where, about four rows back, right where you all are sitting, I look and hear all the cool girls from my school. And they're manifesting that part of us. You know that part that you're going, oh. They're manifesting that part by doing that valley girl thing of going, oh my God, is that Karen Drecker? We're so embarrassed. Oh my God, do you know her? Oh, let's look like we don't even know her. And they're doing all this stuff and you know, whispering and talking and rolling their eyes at me. And in that moment of bliss, like that, all of a sudden I felt shame. I was embarrassed. All I could think about was my pimply face and my acne and my acne and my braces and my straightened hair and all this. And I just felt like I wanted to get out of there. And that's when I realized that's how spirit works. Because that situation was set up at that early age to look at the fact that there felt like there was a line right here. And I could either stay back here and be in that place where I'm, embar I'm embarrassed, I'm shamed, I'm not enough, I'm not worthy. Or I could step over that line and claim all of who I am, flaws and all. So I remember in that moment, looking at that line, looking at Carol Burnett, looking at those girls and going, Thank you very much. And I was never the same. And what happened was the next day I went to school and hear those same girls going, oh, wow, Karen, you're really cool. You want to be in our group? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so when we focus on the bigger picture, of ourselves, when we focus on what it is that we see about ourselves that is divine and unique and beautiful, that's when the miracles happen. That's when we can stand in our power, flaws and all, whatever flaws you think you have, and you allow yourself to be who you are. You know, I think these days, with life as wacky as it is, we all need to shine our lights. We all need to look out and give our hand to someone. And if you're feeling, if you're, if you're one of these people that are like, you know, oh, I'm, I, I'm inside myself and I'm thinking about all my problems and who I am, how are you contributing to our world? You know, I, I, I love my cell phone. Yes, I do. I really do. But I truly believe that we've gotten to this place where we're so inner, inner focused and in, in that little place. I mean, it cracks me up when I fly that like sometimes someone will be about to sit down next to me and I go, hi, how are you? And you can see the look of terror go across their face like, oh my God, you might be a talker. If I say hello to you, you might talk to me. You know, I'm just saying hello. So I found this little thing. In the not too distant future, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook will merge to form one giant, idiotic, supersized, time-wasting, non-productive, time-stealing, mind-numbing, do-not-need-to-know website called you twit face. <laughs> I think it is our job these days to reach out. I think it is our job, our passion, our mission statement to be able to look out at people and connect and see them, really see them. 
And when we allow ourselves to have that sense of self, that standing in your power, you can do that. And it's being kind to yourself. You know, I have a song called um, Gentle With Myself, that the verse just says, I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself, and I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. And when we can be gentle and kind, we can literally see people. So it also even happens when you're at home. So I have these two friends, Jerry and Diane, and every morning Jerry makes his bagel, and he doesn't clean up. He just makes his, he slices his bagel and goes and has his coffee. And Diane would come in every morning and say, Jerry, can you just sweep up the bagel crumbs? Because I just see them every morning and it's driving me crazy. And he'd go, yes, 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 I will. Well, every morning he wouldn't do it. And every morning she'd start her day being pissy. He didn't do his bagel crumbs. But this is what transformation looks like. And this is what kindness looks like. And this is what loving yourself looks like. Is that one morning she woke up and she gets the sponge and she's like... <laughs> and she's, you know, just grumbling about it all. And she has this epiphany. And this is what I love about transformation. The transformation can literally happen like that. Just in a moment you get that, ah, that aha. And she starts sweeping up the bagel crumbs. And all of a sudden she gets it, that one day those bagel crumbs won't be here. That one day he'll be gone. And that morning she started to just, with such love, sweep up the bagel crumbs and bless every one of them. And to me, when we do that, when we can see the love for each other, it just allows us to just be that much more open and give our love to everybody. But it starts with us. And that's why we decided to call this morning all about just loving yourself. It all starts with that. Love yourself enough to ask for what you want. Love yourself enough to look out and see what other people need. Love yourself enough to be gentle with yourself when that inner critic comes in and you go back off. Actually, I thought... I, Taught this to the gals yesterday. I want everyone to do this. Do this with an attitude. And so when your inner critic comes up, you say, I know you were there. Repeat after me. I know you were there. I hear what you say. But that is not my truth today. One more time. I know you are there. I hear what you say. But back off. That is not my truth today. So from that place, miracles are going to happen in your life. I guarantee it. So Buddha said, you must love yourself before you can love another by accepting yourself fully, by accepting yourself fully, being all of who you are, your simple presence, make others happy. Your simple presence, just walking into the room, you don't have to do anything, just you being here makes other people happy. You yourself, as much as anyone in the entire universe deserve your love and affection. I'll say that one more time. You, yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. So do whatever, and Desmond Tutu said, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that will heal the world. And we are healing the world with our love, with our kindness, but it starts with knowing that you are the gift. You. So, oh, hi there. Yes, come on up. So, so this is a song we're going to end today with a song that um, Karen and I wrote a while ago. And we both were kind of going through this thing like, oh, what do you want to, you know, what do you want to write about? And we both realized that we just wanted to be able to look in the mirror, like their beautiful song before, look in the mirror and say, ah, oh, I am a gift. My microphone. I am a gift. I have totally blanked out on the next line. No matter what. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello. <laughs> I am a gift, no matter what age, no matter how I look, no matter what I weigh. I am a gift, and I promise every different tale to tell. I've made mistakes and I have some regrets, but I promise I'll never forget. I am gay. Let me hear you sing that. Because the truth about me is, because the truth about me is, I'm fabulous. I'm fabulous. Thank you for listening to us. We sure appreciate it. Thank you so much. Woo-hoo.